uh, we have American universities, and I think the reverse is, is beginning to be become true to some degree, but we have American universities building very uh, significant academic and research programs throughout the world, ranging from large-scale initiatives like one uh, led by Duke University to essentially transition its business school into a global business school that is distributed across the world. Their first new campus is being built right now in Shanghai um, to uh, scores of other schools that are taking the approach of partnering with other universities uh, to build joint programs, but the sort of bottom line of all of that is that that kind of global expansion is built on and requires a layer of networking capacity and the ability for those networks to work at the global level with the same transparency and ease that they work at the campus level and the kind of applications we support. And so, you know, that, that implies for us uh, a number of needs. Uh, that we will continue to focus on, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, but right now, I think what this means for us is that is that all of us, and Internet2 is, is, is just one of the organizations that has to do this, APAN and others are the same, is to really focus on assuring we have uh, an open and actively engaged international dialogue. Uh, because uh, if we can't deploy the global, if we can't deploy our networks globally, if we don't have that global layer of our ecosystem, and it's not coherent, and it's not architecturally sound, and it's not sort of end-to-end -end consistent, we will not be able to pursue the kind of science that uh, we are, you see emerging, we're not, we will not be able to pursue the kind of globalization of education that uh, I think our members certainly have uh, the ambitions to do. Uh, and so digging down a little bit into what that means, uh, how do we then, if that's our strategy, now what do we do to sort of align our efforts with that strategy? Well, there, there are several things uh, that I think are important for us, one of which is to engage the power of our members in uh, the world. We have, uh, there are very few, Internet2 has approximately 220 major university members in the United States. These are the universities that are the major research universities. And these institutions have extraordinary numbers of partnerships, research, and educational engagements around the world. And one of the things that we hope to be able to do uh, and I think this is important for all of us, is to recognize that in order for our global network infrastructure to emerge successfully, and in order for us to have the level of investment that we need to have from our universities and our governments, that it has to become very concrete. You know, we have got to build programs and projects that, that, that essentially uh, enable and facilitate the existing research and educational relationships that exist between U.S. universities and universities around the world. But we've also got to help them understand how to use this enormous network capability we put in place to be able to build new engagements. And, and, and by that I mean all around the world. We can't afford uh, to have a part of the world, a significant part of the world, like the African continent, for instance, to not be part of this process. And in order to do that successfully, we can't just do it as leaders of research and education networking entities. We have to figure out how we're going to pull our universities uh, directly into that process. Uh, I talked a little bit earlier about the, the need that we have and uh, that has been articulated to us by our university chief information officers who are members of Internet2 that among the most important strategic things for them are to have a technology foundation in place to support 
their development of global programs. And these aren't just research collaborations, these are increasingly becoming educational collaborations where U.S. universities are building new facilities, where they're partnering with local uh, universities. And uh, for the most part, uh, as the universities have engaged in this, and I was at a university at Georgetown that actually has a, a, a remote campus of the university just five years ago began to build this in, in, in Doha, Qatar in the Middle East and had a first-hand opportunity uh, to learn the hard way that globalization of education isn't going to happen if it's built one piece of infrastructure at a time that we have to get the network infrastructure and the technology tools and the services that enable things like telepresence and remote learning and sharing of data and sharing of administrative information. We have to get that infrastructure and services in place ahead of when people are out there uh, building global partnerships. And that, again, is a priority of Internet 2 in an arena where, where uh, particularly now given the interest and level of activity of U.S. universities in Asia, becomes a very, very high priority for us. And uh, that's going to mean that we're, we, we will need to focus on infrastructure in a different way. It's no longer campus-wide, it's no longer nationally, but it's global. Um, that we, we need to be able to assure that the technical staff who support this whole global infrastructure uh, are, are what I would call sort of more evenly developed in their capabilities and that we have the amount of technical capacity we need not just at the top universities in the world which many of us represent, but increasingly in the smaller institutions, in those that are frankly less research-centric and have less technology support th than we have. Uh, but we also think that uh, there's another thing that's very important here, and, and I want to be very, very much more specific about that. Uh, that, that as we see this new global environment develop, we have to ensure reliable connection and end-to-end -end performance for these global services by aligning global infrastructure uh, with leading edge end-to-end -end performance, not current technology. Uh, we are at an inflection point now where over the next two, three, five years, we are now going to see a significant increase in network capacity. Uh, the movement to from 10 gigabit to 40 and 100 gigabit. The movement to optical mesh networks where we will have the capability to support a wide variety of very different kinds of research in very different network environments, particularly now when you factor in the emergence, the potential emergence of next generation fundamental network technologies like something like represented by OpenFlow, for instance. And uh, what we have got to be able to do, and this represents the biggest challenge for us, is that we need to set our design goal uh, to provide global connectivity without bottlenecks. Uh, that, that we need to work together to assure that our end users, you know, who, who are increasingly uh, naive about technology as we move from high-end science to learning and education. Uh, CS very simple. They shouldn't have to talk to, if they want to set up a remote campus or a collaborative program, they shouldn't have to talk to four NRENs, three exchange points, two international providers to get a simple VLAN, virtual LAN set up uh, across uh, a global substrate and they need to have the kinds of tools and capabilities to be able to do that effectively. And, and frankly, uh, this new age of technologies is so close to being on us that we can't afford to wait until it's already deployed at the national network level before we start thinking about how we deploy it at the global level. Uh, I think we also have uh, a strong need to uh, strengthen and support these existing partnerships that we have spent so long uh, developing. Uh, and Internet 2 wants very much 
given our history here, uh, to be a global facilitator for that process. And uh, that means that we will continue to work on implementing our end-to-end -end network performance and measurement tools, uh, continue to work in areas like Persona to continue to work in area in dynamic circuit management. Um, there is another arena where we have a significant need to focus in the U.S., and that is uh, we are lagging so far behind those of you in Asia in the deployment of IPv6 uh, that it will be a major effort for us to catch up. And uh, one thing that I believe you know, we in Internet2 and many of our member community uh, leaders have recognized is that it's now time in the United States to step up to a very, very aggressive plan for transition to, to uh, IPv6. Uh, and so we will continue to focus our efforts uh, on working with the global leadership. Uh, to assure that the mechanisms that we have in place, like this extraordinary meeting uh, uh, and, and, and Terena and the Internet 2 meetings, provide a consistent and coherent focal point for this international dialogue that we need to have. And so we look forward to uh, in continuing to engage uh, with the Pan-Asian community. Uh, I think, frankly, uh, no disrespect to uh, many of our partners in Europe that uh, the level of energy and activity that now character you know that, that, that now centers around the development of the internet in Asia uh, is beginning in a very real way to set the tone and the pace for how this develops at the global level and so we are very much looking forward not just to continuing uh, the partnership between internet 2 and those of you in the room we are very very interested in seeing this the, the, this partnership deepen and uh, you know, really focus on uh, assuring that we're building together the technology infrastructure that is going to support the very best things that we can gain in this world from the globalization of research and education. So I thank you very much for the time that you've, you've given me today to, to, to talk with you about our goals at Internet2. And uh, I look forward to, to meeting you all in the hallways later. And if there are any questions, uh, I think maybe uh, the organizers have left a little time for us to, 